Good evening. I was waiting for our audio. Are we on? Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of West Covina's Council meeting of December 4, 2012. Uh, we will start our meeting with the invocation by Reverend Alexandra Conrads with St. Martha's Episcopal Church and the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Rob Satello. Please rise. Thank you for the tremendous gift we all received this week. Thank you for all those who work and pray, especially for our veterans and our brothers and sisters. In their pro tems, we pray for them and offer our prayers for them. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Help all of us to work together in a spirit of unity and harmony so that we can make this a better and a brighter city for the good of those around us. Uh, Madam City Clerk, roll call please. Mayor Sanderson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Herford. Here. Council Member Sotelo. Here. Council Member Sykes. Here. Council Member Tui. Mr. Tui will not be here with us this evening. He's having some family issues and we uh, send our prayers out to his family at this time. Um, Mr. City Manager, reporting out from closed session. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the record should reflect that the City Council and the successor agency did convene the closed session items to consider the items as listed on the successor agency's uh, special meeting notice and the <coughs> amended uh, notice of special meeting of the West Covina City Council. This is my report out from the closed session. Uh, first, turning to the uh, agenda for the successor agency, um, and as uh, also appears on the agenda for the uh, amended um, City Council special meeting, the item is a uh, conference with legal counsel existing litigation uh, pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9a, case of City of West Covina uh, versus Hassan Imports. Uh, the record should reflect that all members of the council were present with the exception of Council Member Tui. Uh, there was a report on this item provided by uh, special counsel to the city and, and the successor agency. There was no final action taken on this item and I have nothing further to report on this item. That concludes the, uh, the items on the successor agency's agenda. Remaining items are city council items. Uh, turning first to the uh, first item on the amended agenda for the city council, the conference with labor negotiators pursuant to government code section 54957.6 concerning the various uh, labor uh, negotiation groups listed on the agenda. Record should reflect that all council members were present for this item with the exception of council member Tui. There was a report provided by staff on this item uh, there was no final action taken, uh, and I have nothing further to report on this item. The next item in order, public employment pursuant to Government Code Section 54957 uh, concerning the position of city manager was not uh, considered. There was nothing uh, uh, done on this item. Uh, following the uh, uh, remaining two items on the city's agenda are conference with legal counsel, uh, existing litigation pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9a, case of Daniel Wilbur versus City of West Covina. All, uh, all members of the City Council were present for this item, uh, with the exception of Council Member Tui. There was a presentation provided by City Attorney's Office uh, concerning this item. There was per, uh, direction provided to Legal Council on this item. However, there was no final action, and of the, I have nothing further to report on this item. And with the uh, final item, Conference with Legal Council existing litigation pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9a. Uh, concerning the case of West Covina Improvement Association versus City of West Covina. There was a report provided by legal counsel on this item. There was no final action taken on this item, and I have nothing further to report. And that concludes my report out from closed session. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda is any changes, uh, Mr. City Manager. I have no changes to the agenda. Okay, okay. thank you. And we'll drop down to our, well, we have no presentations this evening. Um, however, our next item that comes forward would be our oral communications, which we have yellow speaker cards at the top of the stairs. If you'd like to speak on items uh, on the agenda or if you have a city issue that we can help you with, uh, please bring those comments forward, fill out a card, and submit that to our city clerk. Our first speaker this evening is Mrs. Shirley Buchanan. Sanderson, 
and members of the City Council. And it really is great to see you sitting at the Mayor's position. Thank you. First item I want to tell you is that the latest edition of Discover West Covina was very nice and informative. Thank you. Uh, the second item I would like to talk about is the Civic Center property that the injunction was all about. But first I'd like to give you a definition of due diligence. Uh, there's one uh, um, definition that says an investigation or audit of a potential investment, due diligence serves to confirm all materials, facts in regard to a sale. And then there's uh, an explanation of Investopedia. Due diligence is a way of preventing unnecessary harm to either party involved in a transaction. In the past, there have been many great projects built in West Covina, and it happened under the terms of office of three of the current council members. There have also been a few not so great projects, but they went through anyway. This council selected five very good planning commissioners that evaluated the proposed sale of the Civic Center property for a high-rise medical building and found it not to be a good site for the project. The night it was on the Planning Commission, many West Covina residents spoke against it. The applicant decided to appeal the decision before the City Council, and the night of the hearing there were at least 25 plus residents that spoke against it and perhaps an equal number of people that did not live in West Covina. The ones that did not live in West Covina only cared about getting a job and to take a prime piece of real estate that belongs to the residents of West Covina. Hopefully, prior to the Planning Commission meeting, there had to be a lot of research done by both the redevelopment and city staff as to whether all the required environmental and housing requirements were met. It appears from the court decision that that was not the case. Over the last few months, a council member said several times that the injunction was going to cost the city over a million dollars, and I feel certain his target was the citizens that brought forth the injunction. It is my opinion that had there been due diligence on the part of the city, this project would never have gotten to the Planning Commission. So. The residents that brought forth filing the injunction are owed an apology by a member of this council because they did do their due diligence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Dana Sykes. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Council Members, and City Staff. First of all, I am Dana Sykes, resident of West Covina. I have my own views, and I am my own person, so I will speak for myself. I want to give you a few definitions. Uh, first of all, West Covina is known as a bedroom community, or also known as a commuter town. And um, that definition is an urban community that is primarily residential, from which most of the workforce commutes out to create their livelihood. These communities have little commercial or industrial activity beyond a small amount of retail oriented towards serving the residents, separated from the suburbs by green spaces. That sounds like West Covina. Okay, what do we have over here? We have 100-year-old pine trees. 100 feet tall, I'm sorry, not 100 years old, 100 feet tall. You know, pine trees grow two feet per year. Trees are the lungs of the earth. They help by giving us oxygen to, and breathing in oxygen. Trees help create rain as they expel moisture into the atmosphere. Their roots draw it from the soil and their leaves return it to the air. Trees clean the air we breathe by taking in carbon dioxide through the leaves and then giving off oxygen we need to breathe. So do you think a three foot tall tree is gonna give us the same amount of oxygen and benefits that a 100 foot tall tree will? Hardly. 
And just so, just so you know, a 100 foot tall tree casts a shadow that is 150 feet long. So a three foot tree would give off a shadow of 1.5 feet at best. Consequently, the buildings on the property would use more energy in the summer as well as in the winter. Because um, shades do, do have a dual purpose, they do cool, and they also insulate. And uh, just so you know, pine trees are capable of living 200 to 450 years, which is way past our um, lifespan. I bring all this up because I fought for that property with the Planning Commission as well as before this council. That property is, like I said previous times, is a jewel in our city. When people live in a, a, a bedroom community, they choose the bedroom community because they want green spaces. They want parks. They want to have something other than a big building across the street from them. When they get off a freeway, they see green spaces, that's inviting. If they see concrete, you know what? I saw that in LA, I'll just keep moving on down the freeway. <coughs> that's what this brings to us. It not only brings us a buffer against the noise, it helps the environment. Three foot tall trees don't do that. I have two trees in my yard that I planted probably two or three years ago. They have grown, but not that much. And I nurture them, and they produce fruit for me, but I want them taller because that's what's good for them as well as for the environment. When I um, got pregnant, well actually part of my pregnancy, I recycled. Even though Athens says they do it for me, I wanna make sure it gets done. I'm trying to do my part to make this planet better because our children, and, and even children that are not ours, we have a duty to leave them something that is at least as good as we had, and because if we sell that land, it won't get any better. We need to do our part to make sure we're leaving a planet for our children, our grandchildren, and their children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Forrest Wilkins. Greetings, Mayor, City Council. My name is Forrest Wilkins, resident of West Covina for 40 years. The subject that I'd like to address tonight is a possible conflict of interest. Rumors can distort what is fact. After hearing a rumor numerous times involving members of our city council, I decided to do some fact checking. So I checked through public records and learned in 2007, a Maya Wynn, that's spelled N-G-U-Y-E-N, -E with a date of birth in 1957, took out a business license at 551 East Vine Street in West Covina. It appears that Maya Wynn possibly has a daughter named Dorothy Wynn with a date of birth of 1978. Dorothy Wynn is also known as Dorothy Satello, living in West Covina, and is associated with Roberto Satello, date of birth in 1975. It is possible that Dorothy and Roberto Satello are the son and daughter-in-law of Councilman Satello. So the rumor is that members of the Satello family run the business at 551 East Vine, and the property is owned by Councilman Tui. Councilman Tui has often referred to this location as the Rockview Dairy in past meetings. If this is a coincidence, more than one person has the same name, the council can thank me for disproving this rumor. If the foregoing is fact, why was the conflict of interest never mentioned when Mr. Satello was approved to the city council? Notice I said approved, not elected. Any comment, uh, Councilman Satello? I'm sorry, uh, we are supposed to address the council as a body and it wouldn't be appropriate for him to have a dialogue back and forth. We okay. have other items on the agenda. Okay. Um, if you would like, we would be more than glad to call the city manager's office and, and work something out with, with a meeting if you'd like to do that so we can find we'll out what's going on. We'll have a few more on. things to say Absolutely, then. sir. Uh, 
in the past, I've noticed sometimes there has been a one or two dialogue with uh, the speaker and the city council person. That's why I gave the opportunity. Yes, sir. I, uh, if you look at our rules that we do, I, I, every each mayor has their own uh, style of, you know, running their meetings, okay. and we do have uh, well, regulations. Since, since, and I'll, we'll answer all. I'll answer all questions at the end of the meetings. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I've got a question for the mayor. If this is fact, Mayor Sanderson, you state on your city website that you will investigate anything that goes before the city council. If this is a fact. Why was a conflict of interest never mentioned? Councilman Herford, if this is a fact, and as long as you have known Councilman Tui and Councilman Sotelo, why was the conflict never mentioned? And Councilman Sotelo, of all people, why would you not mention the possible conflict of interest if this is a fact? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, would you like to address it at this time, Mr. Sotelo? Yes. Councilmember Sotelo. This is true. Uh, my mother-in-law did lease the property from uh, the other people who owned it, the Indian family. All right. My, my daughter does work there. Dor Dorothy Sotelo is my daughter, and Robert Sotelo is my son. I don't see any conflict of interest. I get no money from it. I have no nothing to do with the dairy. So I don't understand what you're saying. Conflict of interest. This is a business that my, my uh, in-laws own and my daughter-in-law runs. I cannot see why I have any conflict of interest with this at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mr. Bobby Reyes. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor. Uh, good evening, Honorable Members, City Council, City Officials, and Friends. Uh, remember on November 22nd, uh, 2011, last year, after our demonstration at the West Covina Parkway, I came and attended your meeting and I told you of a, a viable option for the condo, medical condo project. Now that the case has been settled, more or less, the uh, question of the medical condo is smooth and academic to use the term of uh, lawyers. Now may I repeat what I said on November 22nd? You can actually, the city can actually derive more revenues by asking, offering the same property with its 143s as a mini tree park. I said even it could be called like if Chevron pays the Chevron mini tree park. Remember what we are the city called Tree City USA. And this was the reason why my family and I decided to settle in West Covina in 1994. Because we think the city is the greenest spot in St. Gabriel Valley. Now, actually, we can use the slogan Three City USA, as I said in November last year, because if we plant like one million more trees, which the city of Los Angeles is attempting to do at the cost of $116 million, if we can get corporations, remember now the cap and trade, corporations are paying so they can foul out more the ecology, the environment, by paying corporations that plant trees, the city can. Because we have the name uh, Tree City USA. And because of climate change, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we call this in Filipino or in Spanish, horas de peligro. These are the hours of danger for humanity. If we don't plant more trees, which is the best way to combat uh, global warming, there will be no more earth to live in. Now, I, I, I can go and, and uh, submit to you a proposal, but think of, of, of my suggestion. We can have even, for instance, Galster Park, because it has a lot of trees. Uh, we can bid the name, the so-called naming right, call it like Shell, uh, Mini Tree Park. That is the way, and instead of selling land, I think the city should buy land 
to be used to plant more trees. We go again to the city of Los Angeles. The city of Los Angeles had the foresight to buy not only the Los Angeles International Airport, LAX, it owns Ontario Airport, it owns Palmdale Airport. West Covina can eventually buy properties in other cities where the home city is not planting trees. This tree itself can be the livelihood, the source of revenue for West Covina. Now, we, I said instead of selling, we should buy more. And if you appeal to the more than 100,000 residents of West Covina, there are so many ways of, of uh, encouraging them to help. So we cut down the cost of planting trees. Now, we have to come together as a people, as a community, now that the city has lost the case on that disputed area for the medical condominium unit. I think you have to listen to the private sector because you have been selling property, you have been selling parks. I said, let's buy more properties to plant trees and that will maybe that is the solution. And West Covina can be really the, not only America's, but the world's three city USA. Think of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Elsie Messman. Mayor, Council, the City staff, and everyone here tonight. My name is Elsie Messman and I'm also a resident of West Covina. I've been coming to the council meetings off and on since December 2006, often getting discouraged and disappointing, but my sense of duty and of doing what is right always makes me come back stronger. So here I am again. I, this time I was addressing uh, Councilman Tui, but since he's not here, I'm going to read it anyway because I want the people of West Covina to know what he has done. He has left the city of West Covina in a mess and he's decided to go elsewhere. I only hope his other job employees are wise to him. Councilman Tui benefited from the city big time and not only did get paid for being on the council plus benefits, he also got paid $1,250 a month from the redevelopment agency. And most jobs were done by his clients, so there is commission there also. Now whether this is double dipping or triple dipping, I don't know. As I wrote in the examiner in 2011, some of the projects were land sold to Charles Company at the Heights, no bid, Satui client, condos at Sunset, McIntyre, Tui client, Shakespeare Park sold to a, a developer, Abdul Halu, a Tui client, Wix Furniture project given to Charles Company, a Tui client. Here are just a few of the projects that Councilman Tui uh, used this council for his benefit, which not always was a benefit to the city. After all, this council only puts in yes people in a vacancy that appears. I wanted to thank Carolyn and all the people involved in the lawsuit. And by the way, Mr. Tui, Councilman Tui, at the last council meeting stated that our lawsuit was to blame for the city not meeting the housing element projects. You only have to blame yourself and staff for not upgrading the housing element, so don't blame us, listen to us for a change. Since there is little or no transparency here, I would like to remind everyone that the Oversight Board is meeting right here this Thursday at 4 p.m. Please attend and you can see what our redevelopment agency has done for our city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Carolyn Arndt. Good evening, Mayor Shelley, Steve, Mr. Sitella, Mr. Sykes. 
My name is Carolyn Arndt. I've lived here since 1957. And um, I would like to read to you an open letter to the West Covina citizenry on the final ruling against West Covina City on selling a part of the Civic Center. On November the 27th, 2012, Superior Court Judge Alan J. Goodman ruled against the city's plans to sell the 143 wooded area next to the library. The judge requires the city to rescind its approval for the project and to take no further steps toward implementing the project until it fully complies with requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, the Planning and Zoning Law, the Surplus Land Act, and all other applicable laws and regulations. I am and continue to be mystified as to how and why the city violated so many laws in an attempt to sell this land to a private developer for commercial operation. The land was never given to option as a park or open space as required by the Surplus Land Act. In the court proceedings, it was clearly brought out that this wooded area is a berm that is a sound barrier in lieu of a freeway noise wall. To remove the berm requires the state to build a sound wall along the freeway. I wish to point out that the city council hires a city manager and a city attorney who are supposed to be trained professionals to give the city council legal and standard city management advice. Was no advice given on, any, on many laws broken here? Or did the city council simply ignore advice? At any rate, I profess a lack of confidence in our current city council, our city manager, and the city attorney. Is our city going to proceed henceforth, breaking all of California laws which relate to housing and development? The West Covina Improvement Association respectfully requests the mayor immediately seek a council motion as required by the judge's ruling to rescind its approval of this project and take down the commercial lease sign. I also request that the city request review every future and ongoing developmental project, including the Wix project, to determine if all California laws are being followed. Also, any future surplus land, including the wooded Civic Center area, should be presented to West Covina citizens so that we can be given the option to preserve the land as open or park space. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. City Manager, I don't know if at the time would be appropriate if you wanted to respond. I know for the community, um, maybe people that don't aren't familiar with the situation, uh, we can do a real quick uh, brief explanation of, of that if, if this is a good time. Let me start with having the attorney uh, perhaps address uh, uh, the outcome of the uh, judge's ruling on that and then I need to all add more comments to that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. City Manager and uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Mayor and members of City Council. Um, we do have uh, David King from the City Attorney's Office present to um, explain uh, any questions you might have uh, concerning uh, the details of the case. But just uh, in general, um, I did want to just kind of um, clarify what the court's ruling was uh, for the benefit, benefit of the council and benefit of the public. Uh, the court uh, did not um, issue a ruling which prohibits the city from proceeding with the project. Uh, the court's uh, decision uh, indicated that there were certain uh, aspects of the city's review of the project that were um, uh, that required further work. Specifically, um, under the California Environmental Quality Act, uh, the procedures that the city uh, used in assessing the um, the potential impacts from the project were uh, deemed by the court not to be sufficient, and so in order for the project to proceed, the city would have to uh, 
evaluate the project under a, a uh, broad, broader scope of an analysis under an environmental impact report. Um, and also the court did indicate that um, the Surplus Lands Act is something that would have to be complied with for the project to proceed. But, um, it, and so the, it is correct that the, the court did uh, uh, require the project to be, uh, to be stopped. But it's not a correct statement that that uh, decision prohibits the project from proceeding in the future. Uh, essentially, if, if um, the, these issues, review issues, uh, are addressed by the city uh, in the future, uh, and if the project applicant is, uh, wishes to proceed with the project, then um, the project would proceed along those same lines in the future. Um, so uh, I just wanted to clarify that um, since there may be a, a different perception out there. And then if the council does have any questions, more specific questions of a legal nature, then I'm happy to uh, explain those also. Okay, thank you very much for that report. Um, if there's no other comment. Um, if Mr. I Senator. might add just uh, one other thing, you may want to address the fact that we still need to await a writ from the court that lives, leaves the <coughs> final decision out, or addresses the final decision. Mr. King can address that. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. That is correct. At this point, the court has ruled in the case, but there is no official order from the court. Um, the procedure is that there, uh, the plaintiff's attorneys, which is the association's counsel, would prepare a writ. And then our, our office, as the city attorney's office, and also the developer's counsel would have a chance to look over that before the judge signs it. Once the judge signs it, then we will, we will advise you accordingly. Thank you very much. With that, uh, we will go on. Thank you all for your patience, and I hope that if you uh, understand what's going on, if not, please call the city manager's office, and I would be more than glad to meet with you, with staff or whatever, to, to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the next speaker is Cesar Marroquin. Hello, city council, um, members, uh, mayor. Uh, my name is Cesar Marroquin. Um, earlier this year, uh, my father and my, uh, my wife were stricken with cancer. Um, I started trying to help them out as much as I can to support them as much as I could um, as a young family and as a young father. Um, I started doing little benefits and foundations or for local foundations and stuff for cancer. Um, I asked if you guys today to, if uh, I could get uh, a little bit of support. There's a 557-mile marathon going from, Los, uh, from San Francisco to Los Angeles in June. And uh, I'd like to see if I can get any kind of sponsorship from the city of West Covina. I've um, done quite a bit, it's quite a bit of uh, volunteering lately for the city of West Covina. I'd be proud to be able to support or have that support and also be able to display it. Um, basically, uh, I have all the information that I can submit to you guys at any time for the foundation. It would just be uh, to benefit a uh, cancer society and also AIDS for people that are underprivileged and stuff. Um, basically, that was it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you very much for the time and um, for your consideration. Thank you. Yes, I was going to suggest city manager get you a card and please call city hall and, and we can talk about that. Okay. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Our next speaker is Abel Mesa. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, on short notice, I, I didn't really have a lot of time to investigate it, uh, but I've had a, well, before I go on, I want to commend all the speakers ahead of me, which was really enlightening. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the service that I have with uh, Verizon uh, uh, Internet. Uh, I used to have Charter, but their phone service was terrible, so I decided, well, I'm gonna try Verizon, uh, the problem is uh, Verizon only offers uh, uh, speed, high-speed internet, and they don't offer uh, Fios. And high-speed internet is a real contradiction because it's uh, the worst service I've ever had. And uh, I was hoping that maybe the, the city would do something where they can uh, put some pressure on them. I know some of the surrounding cities are on Fios, and I've been getting postcards from Verizon telling me to sign up for Fios, uh, 
Yet, I mean, I get these postcards every week. And uh, up till now, you know, they don't offer it and they don't have a timetable. So I'd appreciate if maybe there's some way where the council or the city can help us out. You know, uh, from what I understand, uh, where we live, it's the furthest point from the station. So the service is, is where the, you know, you can't load anything down. And I, I've tried to get better, uh, higher, uh, higher speed on it. And they tell me it's not going to help. So the only way I think that we have is if we can get some a better service such as files through them. And that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. C. Manager. If you um, could respond or maybe give him a card and we can also get with him as I'm well. I'm going to give you a help. card, but uh, I'm going to have Mr. Freeland speak to you because I know that we've had a number of discussions in the past with uh, Verizon about this. I know there's been some litigation and things that have caused the, uh, that addresses your question. So. I'm going to get your card and I'll have Mr. Freeland give you a call tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming this evening. And I'm hoping that we can help you any way we can. Our next speaker is, uh, unless Chris, did you want to briefly respond or Andy? Certainly. Uh, just for the benefit of the community, back in 2006, the state of California deregulated the cable industry here in our community and throughout the state of California where um, previously Charter Communication had the exclusive franchise rights to provide cable service in our community. Uh, with the deregulation, that opened up the community and other communities to the open market to allow um, other providers like Time Warner, Verizon, and those providers to come into communities and provide their services. Uh, Verizon at the time did has come into our community into certain locations. Um, their intent is to build out in our community like they've built out in other communities like Pomona, San Dimas. However, um, when the economy decided to take a downturn, that's when a lot of the businesses stop with their expansions until the economy improves, what we've been told by Verizon. Um, the City Council and City is very supportive of Verizon coming in and providing, allowing the FIOS use because those residents in our community that do have the FIOS have been very happy with that FIOS system. Um, so we will go ahead and reach out to Verizon once again and encourage them. Um, I know the City Council has um, been supportive of that in the past, and so we'll continue to do so. Thank you so much for your response, Chris. Our next speaker is Irene Fleck. Good evening. I'm going to revert back to happier things. Um, because the library is here and doing well. You know how I feel about these other items. The first thing I'll mention, however, is uh, that's sort of exciting at the library, and this is in conjunction with the city of West Covina and with the San Gabriel Valley Lit Literature Festival. That's coming up in February already, and Linda, Lind Lindell, pardon me, Lindell Morgan has been very, very helpful in getting together with the, the library and the friends of the library and the city. And I think this is going to be very exciting in February. The other thing is, is Galster Park. Thank you very much for supporting Galster Park. They have something that is coming up that I think is really great fun, and I, I've brought the, um, the little flyer. It, they have Fossil Weekend, and that's not to do with old fossils, that's real fossils. And their, their little flyer came out, it says, if you think you're strong enough to break seven million years old conglomerate rock, and you're nine years, older, nine years or older, so that includes all of you guys, you can come up to Galster Park and look for fossil shark teeth at Galster. And we actually have a shark teeth that have been found in the rocks there, and that's part of our history there. This is going to be on Saturday, December 15th at 11 a.m. to 3, and then Sunday, December 16th at 11 a.m. to 3. So you can come up there, and you're supposed to bring your own hammer, preferably a rock hammer. But they do the most, most wonderful things for adults and for kids, and I just wanted to let you know that Galster is a happy place, so please keep supporting it. And then, of course, the other thing is the library, which you know I support greatly. The, uh, we've got a lot of things going on there. We're um, becoming a family place, which is a very exciting thing. And also, on Saturday, the Saturdays, when you're tired of seeing all the people downtown being disgruntled, come over to the library on December the 8th and take a break and have hot cocoa and a family movie. And I, they tell me the movie is really great. And then on the next Saturday, on the 15th, the, the holiday music program, uh, Mr. Craig Newton comes, and he has all kinds of instruments, and this is for a family program, and the, the 
the kids and the adults get to try all these instruments, and he puts on a fabulous program. So please come on over to the library and have some fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Monica Ferraris. Good evening, good evening, Mayor Sanderson and um, Councilman. Um, I'm here representing the Greater West Covina Business Association, and last year we had a fantastic summer concert series. We definitely are very thankful for the partnership that you um, that you provided for us last year, and we're really looking forward to this year. Our two thousand 2013 year looks very promising as far as all of the events that we have on our agenda. And we're very grateful to uh, partner up with you for our 2013 series um, this coming year. Thank you. That concludes our oral communications. And I'd like to take this opportunity real quickly, since we're talking about the summer concerts, that I would like to invite the community and make sure they're aware of all the wonderful events that we do have. Um, sometimes I find myself as a parent being, you're busy, you've got to work, you've got to go to the grocery store, you have so many things to do. And then you hear of an event, you go, oh, you know, I'm just not going to take the time. But you know something? I went to the tree lighting last night, and it was so much fun. West, uh, Field Mall as well, uh, combined with the city of West Covina, uh, had a tree lighting event. They had hot cocoa served by California Pizza Kitchen, and the the group, the youth uh, organization in West Covina is growing. So we need to keep those kids active. They had crafts, arts and crafts. I brought my six-year-old, and I'm so glad I did because Santa was there, and Santa had story time, and it was just absolutely amazing. And it, I have to share a story. My son walks up to Santa and shakes his hand and says, I need to talk to you. And I thought, oh, no, here we go. He's going to go on with a list. And I didn't really hear what he said. And then later I asked him, I said, what did you say to Santa? And he said, oh, I just wanted to thank him for all the gifts that he always brings me. And I thought that was so neat. And then I have a little mailbox outside in it. And he puts a letter in it every day. And Santa writes back. And the letter today, I took a peek at it. And it said, I love you, Santa, and thank you. And it's just the cutest thing. And the city of West Covina provided that opportunity for my child that I, I will always cherish. I have some amazing pictures, and as a matter of fact, I'm taking him as well, and I hope many residents come to Del Norte Park tomorrow. We're doing our grand opening at 4 o'clock for that park. And get out and go to those summer concerts. It's such a wonderful thing what Greater West Covina does for the city of West Covina and what West Covina provides our community. It's just... You know, we have to take the time, slow down, and enjoy and see. And, you know, I've been going to the malls, too, and, and I'm seeing a lot of shoppers, a lot of people smiling and happy. And so I just wanted to let the community know that they're appreciated and thank West Covina. So we'll move on with our agenda. Oh, Mr. City Manager has his hand up. I was just going to add to your uh, invitation for the public for tomorrow is that uh, if you can reminisce on the old... Uh Rockets growing up, uh, we'll be bringing back some of the rocket the ship rocket as ships. part of the playground right. equipment for the kids. Right, great. Well, thank you so much. We look forward to tomorrow and uh, many other events we have coming up this, this next year. Looking forward to it. So the next item on our agenda we have is our consent calendar. Any items that uh, council would like to pull or I uh, would entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second on the consent. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we drop down to the successor agency. Mr. City Manager, is that correct? We recess the City Council meeting. Um, we have items on the successor agency. I don't have an agenda for that item. Do we have anything on that? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I'm sorry. Do you have that? Find mine as well here. So left it on my desk. Thank you, Rob. Bear with me a moment. Okay, uh, Madam City Clerk, roll call for the successor agency. Chairman Sanderson? Here. Vice Chairman Herford? Here. Board Member Sotelo? Here. Board Member Sykes? Here. Board Member Tui. Mr. City Manager, any changes to the agenda? I have no changes to the agenda. Okay. All items are on consent. Okay, and I, I see the consent, and I would entertain a motion for approval of the consent. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. 
Uh, next item is any comments, and I would attain a motion for adjournment for the successor agency. So moved to adjourn. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. We drop down to Mayor and Council Member reports. Any reports? AB 1234 conference meetings. Everyone looks quiet. Then we'll go down to City Council requests for studies or investigations. Um, item 13, uh, Council Member Frederick Sykes. You have the floor, sir. Just recently, we drafted an ordinance to address blight that came about due to the, um, in particular, due to the economic downturn and we were looking at the banks and how to get them into compliance. And so the item that I'm asking uh, support on is um, just a segue from that to address uh, blight from uh, other perspectives. In various parts of the city, I have seen uh, a number of properties, both um, the multi-residential um, living areas as well as single-family homes that um, are having some, some issues. And so I'm just simply asking that if we could perhaps uh, look at what um, Covina has done to uh, assist our city with being able to uh, more quickly respond to requests uh, for code enforcement and that would be, for instance, what we had from, from issues that I see with vehicles parked uh, in driveways that are, that are um, inoperable to where we have, um, without permit, we have folks that are adding to their, to their homes. And then just recently we, we had um, uh, such a serious problem with uh, a leased, uh, it was a business area that was up for lease and the, we had to take in the short term, we had to take the um, owner uh, to court in order to get them to uh, clean the area up. So I'm hoping that I can get your support tonight to um, have our city staff please look and see how we can um, address the issue and with uh, Covina, they have built in to their ordinance uh, the ability to augment their services. And I'm just asking that uh, if the city can, staff can do some research on that to see how we can um, bring forth and draft a measure that would help us um, address the issue, realizing that we do have um, um, the inability right now to respond quickly to, to um, requests for, for a lot of our um, code enforcement issues. And if we can get this drafted uh, similar to what Kamina has done, uh, perhaps we can uh, enhance our code enforcement and get it um, back on track to protect the, um, the property um, in the city as well as the quality of life. Thank you. Just a clarification, uh, I think Kavina's with, was re regarding the uh, area with a lot of uh, apartments, so that's what you're looking for is the, the uh, direction Kavina took, is that what you want to look at? That would be part of it, yes. Okay. What else? I mentioned that we had a, um, a business area. Um, there was a property that was for lease. Business. And, um, we spent resources in, in court, but I don't think there was any, um, any tooth to, um, any strength to trying to put them um, in, in order other than the court. If we can get it on the front end, instead of having to perhaps uh, uh, take them to court, if we can um, perhaps see what other cities are doing to address it uh, prior to getting the court, I'd like to see if we can do that too. Okay, I just don't want, you know, I'm, I'm a sort of the apartments, uh, the businesses, I'll, I'm happy to take a look at it. I just don't want us to spend a lot of money if, uh, if it's going to be a time onerous thing. But it's just a report coming back, so I'll support it. 
Any other comments? Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. City Manager, um, a while back, I know I had discussed this with you, so we may have some, I don't know if we have information, what we've already done in the past. I, I thought that we talked about that. I'd have to dig those reports out, but I understand there may have been some action, or at least some reports that had been done a number of years ago, right. so we'll see if any of that uh, is applicable. Have, uh, in reference to that, I, I think what I'm hearing is something to do with, because a lot of times when you have a, business, a, a property or landowner that is non-existent, they don't actually live there, then the compliance probably becomes a difficult issue, and that maybe that's kind of the direction that I'm, I'm hearing. So if staff is clear on the direction, I'll go ahead and second if Mr. Sykes wants to make that a motion, or Council Member Sykes wants to make that a motion. Yes, I'd like to um, motion that. I'll second. Um, any other comments? Just oh. one, one clarification, too. If, if it's involving business owners or it's involving apartment owners, I think they should be notified um, of whatever we're going to do. I don't know what if we would do anything, but I just want to make sure they're part of the process. So. My okay. thought is we'd probably come back with a report that kind of gives you some general parameters of what's going on in Covina, maybe some stuff on what that happened in good. the past, and then seek direction from council at that time. Okay. And then you can ask for feedback. Okay. Um, you have your direction. Um, motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 4-0. Uh, that drops us down to our adjournments. Um, I don't have any at this point. Any council Thank comments? You Bill Chase. Would you go ahead? I'd like to adjourn in memory of well, Bill, Seth, Chase. He passed away this last two weeks ago. Thank you. Our thoughts and prayers, and maybe get the information to Chris, and we'll send them um, our condolences. Council Member Sykes. Also, I got a call from the family of Ralph Simonian. Um, I should say friends of the, of the family. And um, they indicated, first of all, that our police and fire were just uh, outstanding in their response to this tragic uh, incident. And the family was greatly appreciative of how they were so considerate and treated with the utmost care under the circumstances. Um, I understand that uh, Mr. Raf Simonian was um, um, quite active, uh, in particular, uh, in uh, the city of La Puente. So if we could also add him to that uh, list. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments? I will close by saying I wrote down f something kind of funny, and I'm going to use it to, after every meeting, call City Hall. If you need any help or any problems that you may have, please call, and, and I will do anything I can to try and help. So thank you, and our meeting is adjourned. You know what? As a new council person back as mayor, I do need an adjournment. I'll make a motion. We a motion and a second. Steve's going to second it because he's right there. All in favor?